Good morning, y'all. Getting ready to do some web tech hacking. Pretty early in the pre-flights. It'll probably be about another 30 minutes or so before the code gets cracking. Sit back, put on some tunes. I need to set up. It's been a good number of days since I've done any serious hacking. Uh, coding wise, I guess, I've been uh, not under the weather, but definitely needed to take a break. Probably a little bit overwhelmed by the mess here too. I should clean this up a little bit. Seems like it's gotten a little bit colder in San Francisco too. It's warming up back home, so I hear. Home being the Midwest. Okay. if you put in the hard disk. So you've got the SD based dev board. This is the Tinker board by Asus. It's a little bit more powerful than the Raspberry Pi in some ways. It has double the memory. I haven't explored overclocking at all. I do not have chat open. Now I've got Twitch chat open. Welcome to the chat room. Call if I have YouTube chat or not. We do have live chat. What's up? Let me pop this out. I'm 
just booting up, guys. DLC. Right, all right. Alright, so today we will get started with a React based system written in Closure Script. And let's see. I'm going to use a particular template, I already know which one, but I'm just looking for some auxiliary documentation, like examples. Got some chat pop outs. All right, I can't remember how I made this one. I think I used what I plan to use. Set us up a new fig wheel app and it'll use Regent, which is a uh, React based front end technology. So, the name of the app dash dash, and we want this type of project.
quite so bright, but I also don't like it quite so dark. Dang it. So it's still compiling. Okay, it's been quite a while, hasn't it? I haven't even looked at analytics. I don't know how any of this stuff is doing, guys. I don't really care about analytics that much. Um, this is what I had been working on. I took a little break for like a week. Well, I just ate and slept constantly. Alright, we've got some embed code. We've got some steam and integration. Can make a little uh, widget for this. Added to React Wiki. That happens when this is ready. So we'll note that that's ready. I'm interested in this. That's cool. Steemit is built with React. So we can probably convert this to a React component. I just did this with vanilla JS. Uh, that'll get us some good publicity. All right, now this is ready to go. And we'll just make sure that all is well here. Hey, there we go. off.
Hey, how convenient. Cool. Okay. The latest and greatest stuff. Cool, guys. We've got an app. It's written in Closure. If you squint a little bit, it's written in React. So this is state that'll get reloaded once per page load. So you'll see it gets reloaded, but the state doesn't change. Okay. But here, this is just view, not state. Edit this. Now that changed. Now if we re actually reload the page, we'll get hello closure world. See? So you could think of this as like page storage. like we can see how many reloads we've done. That'll give it a default value. Uh, and in fact, this doesn't get called. So this may cause an error if it's not already there. take that out since we know that it is there. Romp romp because we don't have that state initialized. Something's not right here. This is it. stuff spaces on either side there we go
All right, let's see what happens here. I'm not sure if it auto concatenates content or not.
I'm just trying to figure out how to map the JS extension to JavaScript highlighting and closure script extension to closure highlighting. So it looks like we can manually change it, perhaps. Um, but we don't see closure as a language mode, do we? That's not cool. Interesting that closure doesn't show up here as well. Oops. Oh, okay. That CLJ does highlight. Okay, what else? begin. Do we want to build the whole layout as a React component? Or do we want to just build little React apps that go within the layout? In other words, do we want React to handle routing or not? Blah, this whole, this whole game. Okay. both.
I think I used some kind of routing solution for a React Native app that I did. Yeah, React Router Native. Sounds good. Let's do it. here. This is pretty cool. I have not seen the React Media component, although I can picture how it works knowing how media selectors work. It's pretty sweet. Ooh, interesting. This is a little bit annoying. Kind of cool, but a little annoying.
that's cool. I like that. Okay. Beautiful tutorial to do what I want to do, perhaps. Alright, so we'll get some data back when we return from the login. You'll notice this is a different domain. This is your domain.auth0. So then redirect back. It'll have some stuff in the hash, which is the portion after. Probably have like token equals blah 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 blah. Thought there was a way to do it without redirecting, but what's this?
But I've not seen the scope stuff in Auth0 yet. Cool, so there's some rules. Cool, man. It's cool to follow the rules. I like the passwordless login. Cool, cool. So I can probably just create like a static list of users with some hard-coded names at the simplest. <laughs> cool, cool, yep. Good stuff. Cool stuff, man. Oh, if I need co I want coffee. I don't really need it, but it's like when I have it, I just keep on drinking it until it's all gone. And then I don't have it for a while and I don't really notice. <sighs> kind of Wiz Khalifa logic, man. If you got it, smoke it. I want to do login right now or do I just want to do a simple placeholder Alright, I have had this before. I do not have these app credentials right now.
So what is this saying? It actually has an auth equals auth setup. Let's log in. This is class auth service. Okay. So we've built this based on passwordless lock. Login magic link, email code, and SMS code. Okay. This dot lock dot magic link. This looks like a good path to go. authentication okay we use local storage so that will go between page loads personally I would use session storage that's what we've used for the Steam at login that's okay that's an easy change and then we get the profile for the ID token and we set the profile based on that. So set profile puts it into local storage again. Local storage only takes string, so we've got to just serialize it. I'm unsure why magic link does not have the do authentication bind. This looks like a legit foundation for what we want to do, which is get a little login like this. It'll give us some client side credential. And then we can talk to our back end service and know that we're talking to who we think we are. I may just put stuff in session storage initially and then integrate login later. We shall see. Yeah, we're still technically in pre-flight, so... Okay, and then... We surely just need navigation. We just wanted to get a handle on how login was going to look with the React router, which is still kind of an open question. It seems like we'll just get a callback 
with some new states, so we'll just need to re-render things in terms of our user account. So yeah, that's what we'll do. And indeed, this is what we already do for Steam at login. So I'll just pull up that code quick. the steam upstream dependency So it's a little janky. I just have like a global active user variable. But, you know, given I did it super quick just for a proof of concept, like. Yeah, so then this fills in that variable upon successful login. So we'll do basically the same thing with React. It's just that our um, our global will be inside of this app state. So we'll have like logged in user and it'll initially be nil. And down here then we can make our routing decisions based on that, if that makes sense. So it's just that this uh, this web framework is also new to me too. So I also haven't used React before. I know the underlying ideas of how React and Redux work. I've used them in a different domain, not web. So. This should be fine. Three years old, a little bit old.
right, so we refer those elements. Not too bad. Looks good. And these are probably just slim little wrappers. <laughs> slim little wrappers. Yep, exactly. It just handles the annoying plumbing of mapping it to JavaScript. So this is probably written for an older version of React v3. Uh, we'll see though. React router 0.12. We were looking at what? Dot two dot two. Thought this is a similar approach to what we would take. So then I guess this uses that project as a dependency. Region React Router, yep. Okay, so I think we can add NPM dependencies directly to project. under CLJSJS. Cool. 
cool. Looks like that's up to date at least. Okay, we may have an issue, React Router versus React Router DOM. It's not clear. Here I thought I was only going to have a little bit of coffee left, but it turns out I've got about one and a half cups of coffee left. So I'm going to have a nice super hard fist pump. Hey, what am I up to? 9.13 a while ago. Uh, making, making a little uh, React website. on the chat a ton so apologies for that rut row purge unmounted components is not a function
Okay, so for some reason it seems like we probably need to also include this React router. It's also possible that the React version doesn't line up. So this uses React DOM 15.6 surprise this doesn't use react router so 15.6 versus 15.5 so is there a new version of regent oops Eight. O dot seven dot O is the newest stable, okay. So we'll see what happens. We clearly have a version mismatch though. We have React, oh, so we can probably find an older version of React Router then, which uses oh, that's interesting. Okay, which uses an older version of React. That's interesting, indeed. Those two actually use different versions as well. All right, so it does not error out anymore, which is nice.
This was what I would imagine. Let's just try this one more time. Perhaps there was some unknown error. See, I see this also excludes React. Hmm, this could be why. This could be why. A little bit questionable if you want to change the the version that it was compiled against. Um, we'll probably just want to find an older version of this library, React Router DOM. I guess there will be tags in the repo, we can just look. He's going to interesting. I see, I see, got it.
Alright, alright. Blackest of black coffee. Alright, so it looked like this worked. Let's try. So we can use the newer version. In fact, I don't think we explicitly uh, depend on React, so maybe we should just do that. I guess we're not pre-flight anymore. Technically we are, but uh, I just kind of went today. I haven't taken a shower yet or anything. Woohoo.
right, that looks better. Took a little bit of time. Seems like there's a little bit of a, like a polling interval. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So we've got some style if we want it. Let's get rid of this. Okay. If we want any extra JS, we can just put it there. We don't have a server side component at the moment that's fine um, if we want to we can hook it up in the fig wheel settings somewhere uh, ring handler yep okay JS compiled. Okay. So we're still thinking about how how what makes sense um, for an SPA. Does it make sense to have little pieces within the page or to take over the whole page. Um, given I like to use the static generator, um, it'd be a pretty major effort to do the whole site within it. So what are we thinking? So we're going to get some new functionality. basically think about it similar to YouTube. You can go here. Right now we've just got a login link here, but this can then go site-wide. Uh, this does currently remain until the tab is closed. So if you're organically clicking around between pages, it stays in session storage. So we'll keep using that strategy. So what do we want to do? That would say that we could have two little mini apps, basically one for login on top, one for voting. And maybe we can pass in some shared state here or we, hmm. 
Yeah. In fact, this thing should probably not be touching the global app state necessarily. So on a lot of modern web apps, this would not actually change pages, but I like to use the static stuff, so it does actually change pages. It's a fundamental difference out of the gate that I have in doing the system. Um, so I'm doing it the less trendy, but more I think robust and performant way. So it's just harder to do it this way because you have to know like the old technology, which, you know, the old technology still underlies the new tech. So to me, it's good. Just do a little demo of having two different versions of the same app. Live app, app two, and app three just for fun. So initially we should just have some extra app placeholders. here we're all going to be sharing the same state initially How do we fix this? Hello world is actually referring to app state. Ruh -roh. Um, if I remember correctly, it should just work if you return a function. Let's 
do it like this. Looks like a problem. How did that work? stuff. I don't know how it worked before. Oh, I see. This is just super indented. That's all. going to be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So it's going to happen. Only one's going to get updated still. Why is this? Why oh why? It is because the on reload thing only does it to app state now. good, right? This is the cleanest code ever, right guys? We're ready for a commit, passing code review. Got all the tests written. All right, so the main thing that we wanted to test then was then sharing states between all of them. So in order to do that, we would then put an atom on all of them. We can do other fancy tricks too, but this is pretty straightforward. An atom within an atom.
Okay, if I recall correctly, this should say anonymous cow if we don't have a value there. Yep. going to happen here. Ah, this is not going to work anyway, because BRB. Dude, pooping as a plant eater feels so good. OK, 
Okay, I'm not sure why this isn't changing. Oops. Let's just try setting some initial state in there. So it doesn't seem to be reading that variable at all. This is a good thing. That is not dereferenced, so that should be fine. Active user out of app state. Ah, yes. So then we still have to dereference once more. This will work. There we go. So on first load, we should be anonymous cow. And then after a change, we should be Harlan time. Yep, okay. So then once we update it, this will get called. Make a capital E. No, 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 no. Harlan time. Good stuff. This I don't like to do actually. Refer Adam. I do like to just do R. And then do R slash Adam. rerun this test having this uh, non-regent atom. so it's still worked with the regular atom. Um, From what I remember, the Regent version just like has some extra bookkeeping that happens. You definitely need to use it. I'm just uh, experimenting for my own purposes. I know it can be confusing to some people, but I like to kind of find where stuff breaks so that if it breaks later, I have some idea of what the hell just happened. So.
this could be future. I've wanted this for a long time, but haven't gone down the path yet. shit. Alright, so why would we be making an, an app for dynamic viewing? Uh, it is because we have these little things called feeds. And if we have multiple sites going online, what if we want to look at other people's videos without going to their site directly, for example? Thought I had a dedicated page for this. Actually, it'll be under video. I might have not set up the tags yet. Basically all videos should have the video tag and then if you have friends with another site you would then subscribe to their their feeds. I know we got one on tinydatacenter.com. Forty-four.
cross origin. Womp womp. Shit. I don't have this set up on any of my hosts, I don't think. Should be fine on YouTube, I think. That should support cross domain. Plan B. Save it here. Okay, looks good. And now here. I highly doubt that the content type is set right here. Oh, 
text slash XML. Fancy that. Okay, so HTTP kit is the server that Lion Ring is set up to use then, and it must have uh, some default content types. Okay, so. There may be a response object in here, or it may just be a buffer. Let's just print the whole response then. Content type text XML. Text slash XML versus application slash XML. XML, that looks nice. Let's see if we can set a breakpoint.
Hmm. I've seen source mapping work before. Surprised. response. Apply response type A. document that's what we want Okay, so I see how we can force this. I don't see an auto way. So we can do response type document. Way better than documentation. Unfortunately, that's my experience. It's almost always the case. All right, so now hopefully instead of a string, we'll actually get an XML document. There we go, XML document. Fucking play. Uh, Fucking play a dude, holy shit. Watch this. In fact, let's try something fancy. Raw log it, baby. Pre 
assistant array map. Good stuff. So for body, we get a document. You've got RSS. I probably could have used React API to make a HTTP request. That's okay. Or do you need a module for that? I see, I see. That's pretty cool. So you just have a portion of your page that requires some data. I like that. I think there's something like fetch for React Native. React Native. I guess I figure since it's web, you can figure it out yourself because you're integrating it with your own app for the most part. Whereas React Native, you're going on top of a host platform. JS Dom.
fall back, ref to that moment. I think I've seen this before. Okay. I think you can do ref with react native. That's where I've seen it. String refs in the related find dom node or r dom node are now considered an anti-pattern. Good stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay. Uh, so what does that say for us? We kind of want to manipulate a uh, second document, not the document. The document that we want, not even manipulate, we just want to query. jQuery doesn't support namespaces last I knew. In fact, I made a jQuery namespace plugin last time I wanted that. Although this was like 2008, so maybe, because browsers didn't even support it well back then. Uh, actually, let's see. Let's see, let's see. I might be overlooking something simple here. This thing is a document, right? How do I get a reference to this? Turn this if actually.
Oh, there we go. Oof. Watch, there's like... Anyway... There we go. see so there is no built-in uh, so items are in the default namespace effectively now let's see if the namespaces get registered okay so good stuff that is because we have this namespace prefix. Let's do just a little bit more testing. Say we have That should be good. Okay, let's do this again.
there's our super link. Okay, we still got the add on now. Let's try this. Okay, now this is kind of expected because let's see what happens. thing is I think each element probably has a context like this Okay, so this probably still won't have it. Still probably have to dive one level deeper onto the superlink itself. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Okay, look up namespace URI. This will probably break. Yep. So we could look up. Yep, yep, yep. Now, one thing we can probably do look up namespace URI. This is just confirming what I haven't done for like eight years. Now, if we put this at any level above. Just put it at the item level now. We should be able to look up that prefix higher up. So without having to get the link itself. And in fact, let's just see what happens here. This should get us the same stuff. Yeah, super link.
Now, in fact, zero should get us the same thing, even though it itself is not a super link. It does not. As should this item, though. It does not. Interesting. Oh, you know, I haven't reloaded. Okay, so those things I just said, I've got to retest. see what this is. This is now the item with the super link. And the first thing we got here is actually the element that is not super link namespace. But yet since super link is defined up above, we can still look it up. So we'll go back to the item level. Cool, cool. So we are lit on that front, so we can just use regular query selectors to get a collection of the items that we're interested in. So they're all going to have a link that we're interested in, description that we're interested in, hub date that we're interested in doesn't look like it even has title, it just has description. That's not cool, we kinda want title. Title, so we wanna go under elements, item. Yes, yeah, so there should be a title. We just don't fill it out for some reason. Hmm, enclosure, eh? Cool. Oh, here, here is title. Item. I guess it's just down there somewhere. Yeah, I just missed it. Did I accidentally delete it there? Nope. Okay, we got title. Okay. So effectively, then. We just need to do some fancy stuff on here. Um, I assume we can just use regular closure script functions. So if we do Just map.
technically I can do it from over here. Man, I am pooping so much today and it feels so good. I ate like 25 ounces of black beans and a couple potatoes for dinner. That'll do it, man. This is like number four and they've all been big steamy, yummy. Thinking outside the box a little bit. I'm uh, gonna try to do this here. Okay. Right, because I'm not in the same namespace. So let's try this. This is okay. So we've got a function there.
think we can just dereference like this. It's probably gonna mess up. Yeah.
Hmm. I see, I see. I see, I see. Okay, okay, good stuff. This is pretty impressive. Ah, oh, pretty interesting, pretty interesting. This might work, a clone. Even though it's not technically an array, right? something nice. Oh, 
Okay, so it looks like this does it for us. So it's still not a sequence per se, but let's see if we can iterate over it. In fact, Okay, there we go.
Ah yes, dot dash, dot dash, how could I have been so foolish, dot dash. This would be method, this would be field, huge difference. We should just see item a bunch of times. Good stuff. There we go. Mostly null except for superlink. And 
indeed, indeed. Interesting that that got the atom prefix though. Oh, here we go. That's why atom link equals. Cool, cool. So we've got three things with namespace link. Uh, three different namespaces with element name link. That's pretty cool. All right. Is it lunchtime yet? Perhaps, perhaps. Okay, so I think I've kind of got the platform figured out. I'm gonna do some feeds. I need the ability to click through from a feed onto a specific item and then we'll render and we may do login for voting, etc. There might be a surprise. I uh, might do a non chat or not a non chat. We shall see. Overall, I don't really use social features that much, but since I want other people to actually use this so that I can view their videos like that, um, I sort of need to build supporting stuff around it, so... Okay... So we'll have, like, the feed reading portion of a dynamic. We'll do what's called progressive enhancement. We'll still use our existing static site. But then we'll have a page for like subscriptions. And then on the subscriptions page, it'll be sort of like, sort of like a playlist, except you'll link out to other people's versions of the site and we'll have different sources of these playlists. We may have Steemit, we may have RSS. So if we do Steemit login, we can pull those. So nobody has upvoted this one yet for some reason. Yeah, 
So if we log in with Steemit, we can figure out all the people that we're following and pull in their videos. Looks like they've got re-steaming. Yeah, so we'll do that. And what am I going to do for lunch, guys? I had two bags of potato chips yesterday. That was delicious, but I'm just thinking, do I want more potato chips today? I had tons of dates yesterday. Those are delicious. I've been eating tons of oranges. Orangey. Might be time for some Huel. It's been a while since I've had the Huel, which is fine. Yeah, I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna do 500 calories, maybe 600 calories of Huel. And probably just be back within an hour or definitely less than an hour. We'll see.